Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome back to my channel. This is a roundup of the Persid's Meteor Shower and I'm going to show you um, stacked photographs taken with our Meteor cameras but also the stuff that I got with my digital SLR. The location of the cameras is in the first um, couple of pictures I'm going to show you. The digital SLR stuff has all got timestamps on the screen that you can see and on the not the track stacks of the meteor cameras it shows you the meteor rates um over the whole night on the corner of each picture so i'm going to talk over them but there is that information there so if i miss anything when i'm doing the voiceover then that is where you'll find it so first of all, looking at our track stack. So this is our meteor cameras. We have four of them pointing different directions and it takes all of the meteor captures that night and stacks them, but removing the movement of the stars. What's interesting about this picture is that the thing that shows up the most is the radiant of a different meteor shower, which is the Kappa Cygnids. And so, yeah, there are more than one shower active any time quite often and at the moment we have three so it was really interesting to to spot the the peak there this camera is looking southwest so Persid meteors that are further from the radiant there have long straight tracks which look really striking which is why I like to take pictures that way this camera is pointing to the northwest and you can see the radiant is kind of up to the upper right of this this has quite a lot of movement in it so obviously the the stacks create a very strange shape but you can clearly see that most of the meteors in that frame are actually persids this is the the camera that is pointing northeast looking directly at the radiant and there are other meteors in this picture at the moment on this particular night because um, we started here on the 8th of august so other meteor showers were kind of encroaching so the radiant doesn't show up quite as well but as we go through the nights then you can see that the radiant becomes more clear so looking southeast the night after that the the rates definitely started to pick up every night at this point the moon wasn't quite as bright it was still setting so it was giving us a, a little bit of darkness to pick up more meteors I love the view on this camera. The Southwest camera just gives you such a gorgeous view of those long trails all appearing to kind of rain down from top to the bottom. And it's a great direction for us to look from the garden visually. Um, so, yep, yeah, this is, um, again, just the, the meteor stacks. Funny shape because of getting rid of the star movement. But I really like 1L. I think we get some great things on there. Now, the radiant is just to the upper middle of this shot. So you're starting to see that show up a bit more clearly. If there are aircraft or satellite trails in these images, it's because a meteor happened at the same time that that was in the frame. So there isn't really a lot we can do about it. I can manually clone them out, but I haven't done that on all of these. So moving on again to the 10th meteor rates in the bottom corner of these pictures so you can see that the rates are pretty high it's looking good and um, every direction was picking up a decent quantity of meteors at this point I was still relying on the meteor cameras I wasn't actually going out visually and stay taking pictures with my digital SLR but that's coming next um, so there's a really bright event on this picture you can see there that looks like it was bright enough to be officially classified as a fireball a meteor is not a fireball unless it's brighter than minus mag 4.0 um, that one definitely looked like it was and there the radiant is now becoming really apparent and you can see that the meteors close to the radiant have got those shorter trails. I mentioned that in my previous video and it really shows up here. Now the night after that I actually went out with my camera the night of the 11th 12th and I picked up a few meteors. I had two cameras running, took nearly 6,000 photographs and basically picked up a few so this is a, a nice Persid meteor in the northern sky. Persids are really characterized by their their green trail and it just looks really gorgeous it's visually quite often green but this actually left an ionization cloud which I was surprised by because with that amount of moonlight I genuinely didn't think I'd get any um, but it doesn't last very many frames but it's definitely there it's where the gas has been ionized by the meteor burning up and it leaves that scar behind in the sky that slowly dissipates this isn't a meteor um, ionization trail it's just a very faint persid um, not very 
dramatic but this one is much brighter um this one is a cap signet it's not actually a person it's going the wrong direction it's going exactly the opposite direction from where it should be going still colorful still nice and bright but not a person so always worth remembering not every meteor you see will be a person when you're out on that shower i love having a camera pointing towards the plow asterism because seeing a meteor heading towards that is just gorgeous and this is another one that actually left an ionization cloud so again i was really surprised by that the moonlight you can see the sky is barely dark because the moon was so bright but on my subsequent eight second shots you can see that there was just a brief moment of ionization cloud without the moon that would have lasted a lot longer so here's another person in the west facing camera this time so i had one pointing more or less north one pointing more or less west long trail nice and bright looking gorgeous um, so the timestamps of all of these are, is in the bottom of the screen. So this was another one that was not particularly dramatic in terms of how bright it was, but it's like the shape of the trail is interesting because it's obviously had like a little kind of bang at the end where you've got that brighter tip on the meteor trail. And here is another one. And you can really see that meteors do not look like satellite flares because the, the lighting is not uniform across the meteor when you look at the trail. Whereas with a satellite, even during a flare, the, the transition from fading to brightness is very smooth. You don't get that with meteors. Now, this is um, on the, the night there of the 11th, 12th. And the, we've got quite a lot of meteors being picked up on the cameras considering the moonlight and you know how much that was bleaching the sky a little bit of thin cloud here and there kind of encroaching but still a lot of meteors and you're starting to see now that nearly all the meteors that are being picked up are following the same track so obviously depending which way you're looking will be determined by which way um, the meteors are going but that looks like the Kappa Cygnid at the bottom there um, it's definitely not a person but all the others traveling down um, towards the left side lower left of the screen they're all Persid meteors now this is pointing at the radiant and you can really see the meteors are kind of extending out from that empty spot in space there all the meteors close to the radiant very short trails the ones are further out much longer so gorgeous so now we move on to the night of the 12th 13th which was officially the peak of the shower and I got this lovely fairly bright person in the northern sky this night I had one camera running rather than two and I took 5,000 photographs with it and I stayed up until about three in the morning and um, both nights three or four in the morning <laughs> um, so here's another faint meter the bit at the top which I'll zoom in on in a second but still pretty heading straight towards the bowl of the plough. It was a faint meteor but there's still that hint of green in the trail and you can see the uneven illumination towards the tip of it which is very typical. Here's a lovely bright one, very colourful. That is a Persid um, over our neighbour's apple tree. Absolutely gorgeous. The next one was an absolute cracker though. That was it was just so nice. I mean this was really pretty. I thought this would leave an ionization cloud, but it didn't. Um it surprised me a little bit. This one did. This was a definitely a fireball. It was Mag minus four point eight, picked up on several UK Mon cameras. It was so beautiful, really colourful. I saw this one visually. It was absolutely stonking. And here it is close up. And this one definitely left an ionisation cloud, which I'll show you in a second. But again, that colour, you can see the green at the end and kind of an orangey pink colour. And the ionisation cloud it left behind was really bright. This, um, this video got me into trouble on Twitter and I'm still completely baffled about it. So I was sharing, you know, what my observations from the night of the peak and I shared this video with a description with a few hashtags and Twitter gave me a 12 hour ban because they claimed I had um, basically posted some privately produced or distributed intimate media. There isn't even a person in this, so I just don't understand how they've come to this conclusion. I could unlock my account by ticking the box saying, yes, I accepted, I broke the rule. This is a serious rule. I don't want that on my account that I have 
basically shared revenge porn with somebody. That's just not what I've done. So I'm having to wait for the appeal. It's now Wednesday. I've been locked out of Twitter since Saturday, which is infuriating, but there's nothing I can do about it. But anyway, there were some other meteors that night, so I'll show you those now. This one, not as bright, obviously wasn't a fireball, but still colourful and very pretty. And the next one off to the to the left side, I'm going to zoom in on that for you because that had a really interesting shape on the trail as well. This again, looking to the north, really pretty. There's colour very evident there. Again, didn't expect to see a lot of colour with the moonlight bleach and everything, but there is definitely colour there. And you can see that uneven illumination that you get along the trail of a meteor because it's burning up. So it, it kind of fizzes and pops and it's not just a uniform smear of light. So I love it when a meteor passes straight through the bowl of the plough, which is why I tend to favour pointing my digital SLR in the northern direction. I just love that so much. Um, and I have one other meteor that I caught on camera that night, the timestamps on the screen there, and that was another really colourful, very pretty meteor. So I did pretty well, all things considering. You know, I took 5,000 pictures, but I, I got a few nice ones on camera. Now, the, the meteor cameras on the track stack, you can really see that the rates were on some directions the rates were similar to what we'd had a couple of nights ago because again the moonlight was impacting that but the one that was pointing at the radiant really ramped up it some number of meteors that night which is great um, so these are really good to see now this was another fireball in the western sky that I actually saw visually and visually to me this looked brighter than the one that I'd actually caught on camera in the northern sky and um, this was officially a fireball ball as well but um, as far as I know the exact analysis hasn't been done because this oversaturated the camera pixels but it was a great um, fireball all the same so here you can see the north facing camera the kind of northwest facing camera you, everything is kind of seeming to come from the top right corner and heading down towards the lower left but if we swing that to the radiant you can see the radiant very clearly in the middle of this photo so many meteors coming out from there there was um, a great deal of meteors that night which was fantastic the night after that because I'd been up all night for two nights running I was exhausted I'd also driven to Coventry and back to do a talk so I needed to go to sleep I was in bed by 9 30 but that night we had still a bright moon and thin clouds so the rates kind of dropped off dramatically not because well the rates do drop off but the shower continues to be active right through to like the 24th of August I think um, but the rates were definitely lower on this night so I was kind of glad I didn't push myself through the fatigue and stay out there were some nice meteors but the thin clouds kind of getting in on the action the moon rose a little bit later but was still a very bright gibbous moon still some lovely events though there was this really nice fireball um, a short trailed fireball which is on this view and also the view pointing at the radiant so there were some really really nice events that night so it's always worth going out the nights before and after the peak because you still get this awesome stuff now you can see here that the, the kind of short trails that are coming out from the radiant are definitely fewer than the night before but that again is a function of the cloud and the moon light. This picture is awesome. This is a stack of every single Persid meteor over four nights and it just looks incredible. So all the non-Persids have been removed. There's the odd aircraft trail or satellite trail in there but every meteor in this picture is a Persid over an entire four nights and you can see the radiant there. It just looks so extraordinary. It's like a big firework exploding. So beautiful. This function isn't available in RMS yet. It's an experimental thing my husband's working on. So these are the stacks of every meteor from the 1st to the 13th of August. Um, through the overnight 13th 14th so these are not track stacked so this is just you can see the stars faintly trailing in the background but we had 805 meteors on this camera so that's on the southeast facing camera so that's a lot of meteors um, up to the 13th of August here you can see that bright fireball plus lots of other really bright events and there were 958 meteors on the southwest camera so many events it's just mind 
mind-blowing just how many meteors we actually get when we've got a clear night. Um, it really is just extraordinary. This one is looking northwest, so there are only 589 here, but that is the furthest point away, really. Um, this one, 1,165, yeah, that's a lot of meteors. That's looking straight at the radiant, so you would expect there to be more meteors in that part of the sky. The trails are shorter, but there are oh, so many meteors, absolutely gorgeous. Visually, I saw about seven per hour on the peak, which is bang on the predicted rate of eight per hour, not the rate that the press were quoting, um, because that was the zenith hourly rate, which is not what you'll see. I say this time and time again, but what I saw visually was pretty spot on. What's interesting is looking at Oops, I pressed the wrong button there. So what I was trying to say is it's really interesting to look at the radio meteor data to, to see how that corresponds with what you're seeing visually. So the heat map here is basically every box is a one hour period. So going down from top to bottom, you've got the time in UT from midnight um, through to midnight the following day. Then across the top, going from left to right, you've got the day of the month. So you can clearly see that on the night of the 12th, 13th is when we saw the peak of the, of the Persids and actually the night before had pretty decent rates as well. So there's a box for each hour and the number that's inside that box is how many detections the radio meteor rig picked up. So it's, it's basically detecting backscatter and um, by picking up a signal from the Grave antenna in France. So some of it is forward scatter, some mostly backscatter, and as a meteor burns up in the atmosphere, it interrupts that signal and is a detection. The radio meteor rig is fantastic because it doesn't matter whether it's broad daylight, pouring with rain, cloudy, whatever the conditions, it's still detecting meteors and it can also detect meteors that are way beyond the human eye's um, ability to, to see them. So basically the human eye can get down to about mag plus six if you're in a very dark location. The Raspberry Pi meteor cameras that we have basically can see down to about the same. But anything fainter than that, we can't pick that up. So the radio meteor rig is getting that. So it doesn't cover the whole sky by any means, but you can clearly see the diurnal increase in rates, which happen even when there isn't a shower active. But during the Persids, definitely in the dawn part of the night is before dawn anyway, the few hours before dawn is when we saw the most meteors. Now, I've got a friend in the USA who got woken up at around about seven o'clock UT by some foxes and went out to have a look just to see if anything was happening and was absolutely blown away by how many meteors he was seeing. Turns out it corresponds with that little um, outburst that um, we can see it around six or seven in the morning for us in the UK, UT that is, um, so that's one hour behind British summer time. So yeah, it's really interesting that somebody actually saw that visually, so it backs up the fact that um, that is a real number. Sadly, it was daylight for us when that happened, and by that point I was so tired I would have been in bed anyway, <laughs> but um, it's really great to just piece all of this together, because it's great doing visual, it's great doing digital SLR photography. The Raspberry Pi Meteor cameras are phenomenal, but having the radio meteor data as well just gives you yet another layer of information. So this year we've been very lucky with the weather in most of the UK for you know a considerable run up to the Persids and even the night after the peak there was still only thin cloud around so really we've been very very fortunate this year. So if you wasn't able to get out yourself to observe this year I hope you found this interesting. If you did observe any of it let me know in the comments. Um, did you see very much? Did you see any fireballs? Did you get any on camera? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So take care, don't forget to hit like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.